we're looking at wrapper classes now and all the primitives well at least these primitives have a wrapper class which what that is is a class that encapsulates the value that this has it also gives you methods attached to it and we saw the uh, dot equals method with strings before and you can try to call the equals method here but it says int cannot be dereferenced which means an integer there is no methods that you can use on integers there's also no fields but there are no methods so you can just print out i like this and it will print out uh, i but there are no methods so this would not even allow us to compile okay so I do like this book a lot, but I believe that this is the first thing I found that's outdated in it. So here the uh, wrapper class for int is called integer. Normally how you'd make a new integer is like this. Uh, now it's going to complain because it's redundant to put integer integer. It's going to want me to go and put a var here. And I want to tell you to resist the urge to do that uh, because I like to have the type at the beginning of the line so you know exactly x is an integer. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not going to talk about vars here. Okay, it's also complaining we don't need to do this uh, integer. So let's make it look exactly like it does in the text here. And now when I run it, we're going to get something different than what the book says. All right, now it says the same thing the book says. We run it, and it says X and Y are the same object. Uh, there's an update in Java that when you compare two integers with the double equal sign, it actually compares their value uh, when you do this. Uh, it used to be that it would compare, they'd both be pointing to a different place in memory, and then uh, you would have to use the dot equals, which would compare their values. Uh, so I just want to warn you, you can now compare uh, a lot of primitives with the double equal sign. All right, so now we're going to create a string and then go ahead and turn it to an integer. Now you can turn anything into a string very easily. Uh, maybe we'll do that as soon as I paste this in here. So if I want to turn, um, let's see, the number, one, two, three, four, five, into a string, one kind of uh, quick and easy way to do it is you just add an empty string to anything and it turns it into a string. That's a nice little trick. You can uh, turn anything into a string by just adding an empty string to it. Uh, so it's very easy to turn into a string. Turning a string into a number, a little less easy. So how do we do it? There's, in the integer class, there's a parse int, and then you give it the string. Uh, and then we'll do, now this is going to look very unimpressive. It'll print out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we use string here and the number over here. Uh, but what we can do, Let's go to the number, we can go like this, and it should increment number by one. And then you can see that it did increment it right there, and then print it out and went from five in that uh, place to a six. You could, if you want, put a few of these in a row. Oh, need extra parentheses. I don't recommend you ever do this syntax, it's horrible. Oh, and they won't even let me do it. So it's going to increase it twice. Okay, they'll let me do it one time. Anyways, this is an integer right here, so that you can you know increment, decrement, whatever you want to do. This is a string, so it would not make sense to do plus plus right there because it's a string. You can't increment a string or decrement a string. Uh, now I could do num equals like three times num 
run that. And then there's three times number right there. Uh, so this does actually get you uh, the numerical value. Now let's start taking some guesses. All right, what do you think would go here if I want to do the same thing, but I want to treat it like a double? We do double dot. And what do we want here? Parse int. I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's parse double. There we go. And that means guessed what variable we wanted to put there. And let's go ahead. Dub. There we go. It doesn't look impressive, but when you print out a double, it always gives you a decimal point. Uh, and I think it gives you one digit after the decimal point. So there you go. That's how to turn strings into numbers. It takes an extra line of code. Remember to turn a number into a string or anything into a string. You can just add that empty string to it.